Something else to look into is I want to think about what types of different types of videos do our students make. So one is animation. And for, anima for animation students, something I'll see oftentimes is they'll go through, take a whole bunch of pictures with a digital still camera, they'll bring that into Final Cut Pro 6 or 7, and then they'll go through and slice each individual frame down to one or two frames. This is incredibly, incredibly time consuming and annoying. Uh, something that they can always do is just bring it into a QuickTime Pro and export and bring it in as an image sequence and export it out as a video. But sometimes students don't know that. Final Cut Pro 10 does not have that option. It can export image sequences. What's really nice with Premiere Pro is it allows you to bring in your footage, a whole bunch of just separate images in as an e image sequence and editing it as a whole clip. The other big thing that Premiere Pro has going for it in animation is the ability, as I said before, to export stuff out to After Effects. So I think for students who are editing primarily, an primarily animations, Premiere Pro CS6 is the winner, hands down. Art video. Now I've broken art video down into two separate types. These are very broad categories, but basically they're the ones that are much more about composition, production value, and the look of what's in front of the camera. Things similar to maybe Matthew Barney or in the Cray Master Cycle. Or we've got other, the other end of the spectrum where things are much more in your face, more do-it-yourself, more visceral, people in makeup, the, the camera's a little bit more shaky, things are a little bit more low budget, production values are probably a little bit less. Stuff like Ryan Tricardin's pieces. Now, if we look at both of these, I would actually say that different editors are going to be helpful for different students in this way. So, for those students who want to do highly produced videos, the integration with After Effects and the extra bit of control that you have with Premiere Pro would be beneficial to them. For people who are doing more DIY stuff where the camera might be shaky, where they don't really have a complete idea of what they're shooting and need that additional organization, I think Final Cut Pro 10 is the helpful option. Next is documented performance. So these are pieces that where the student is actually really doing a performance piece and they're documenting it and calling it video art. Oftentimes the student is the one who's doing the actual performance and they're getting a friend to videotape for them. In this situation sometimes the use of a tripod is not optimal or it's just a documented performance so people are really really concentrating on trying to get the performance down and then we come back and look that the footage might not be white balanced or properly stabilized. So with this, once again, I think Final Cut Pro 10 is going to be helpful with the options to automatically fix those things through analyzation. Next up, documentary and narrative. This is something that a lot of schools, that's their main bread and butter, but it's only a small option for us here at PNCA. Once again, I think it's sort of a tie, but I think in documentary, particularly with the added organizational skills that come in with Final Cut Pro 10, I would give them a slight edge. Found and recontextualized footage. So this is something where the student hasn't actually shot the footage. They're bringing it in from something separate like YouTube, archive.org, or from a DVD or videotape. With these particular type of projects, we often see the footage strewn everywhere. The students are really just trying to work and collage things together to see what works. And oftentimes, the last thing on their mind is organizing their footage before they do that. For this reason, I think that Final Cut Pro 10 is going to be a huge boon for them. They can take the stuff down, import it in, and it's automatically part of that database. The other thing is the ability to kind of compare footage side by side as we have in this clip here where for instance you might have a 1950s housewife next to some sort of pornography or something like that. With both of these applications, both Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro 10, the ability to crop down and put multiple layers works perfectly well. I would give just a slight edge in that instance to Premiere Pro because of its integration with After Effects. But for the overall flow and the ability to go through and edit different things together, see how things look side by side, one after the other, I'm going to give the award here and the choice and preference to Final Cut Pro 10 because of the fact that it brings all the media together. Next up we have manipulated 
FX manipulated video, which is basically video where there's very strong emphasis on FX to the point where it's possibly collage or manipulation of the signal. With this, hands down, the option is going to be Premiere Pro because of its integration with After Effects. This it, there's just really no question about it. There are some really nice, nice, nice options of effects in Final Cut Pro 10, but it is somewhat limited, and to get some really intense effects, they're going to have to go over to After Effects, and the integration that Premiere Pro has with that gives it a huge bonus in that option. Next up is music video, and music video also can rely heavily on effects, so I would say I would give a slight edge in this option to Premiere Pro. The next question is how do our students make video? And this is really important. Some schools really emphasize on production video where you are going to be one person, one part of a large production flow. Most of our students, however, are one-man bands. They're going to shoot, edit, and create most of their projects all by themselves with very, very minimal crews, if any. For this reason, I think that all of the organization and all of the things that Final Cut Pro 10 helps you with gives it a slight edge there. 